All right, in this video, we're going to talk about word formation and a few different processes that we can use to create new words. The first one is compounding, and compounding occurs when two free morphemes combine. In other words, when two standalone words combine to make a new word. So we have an example of a noun and a noun coming together to create a new noun. For instance, the word basketball. Basket is a noun, ball is a noun, and then we get the word basketball, which is a noun. So we can actually express these in trees. So we can say the noun basket and the noun ball create the word basketball, and that is a noun. So basket is our first noun, ball is our second noun, and that creates the word basketball. Same thing with washcloth. So here you have wash as a verb, cloth as a noun, and then this becomes the noun washcloth. So here you can have a verb and a noun becoming a noun. We can also say something like inside. So inside is a case where we have a preposition in combining with a noun side, and that is making the preposition inside. So typically what happens is whenever we have a compound, it is the category of the second free morpheme that determines the category of the entire compound words. Some prepositions are an exception, in the case like inside or outside, where the preposition is determining the category of the compound. But typically, we can just look towards the uh, rightmost free morpheme category to determine the category of the compound. Okay. The second way we can create words is a process called clipping. And this is removing non-affixes. So this is just removing the ends of words where we don't think that they have uh, any sort of, you know, typical affix status. It's not like an ending like ed or ing that is uniform. For instance, taking the word gymnasium to the word gym, nasium isn't an affix. It's not something that attaches to other words to make new words, but we remove the letters and we're left with gym. Medicine, we may take off this isin, which is clearly not an affix, and then make it plural by adding s. If we were to shorten the word linguistics, we might take off the wistics part and just end up with ling. For instance, when I used to talk with classmates, I'd say, oh, did you enjoy your ling classes? That's how we shorten linguistics. It's how we clip it. It's clipping because you're literally just taking a pair of scissors, metaphorical scissors, and chopping off part of the word. Uh, maybe that image does not look like scissors that I just drew, uh, but you can get the idea. You can also think of it as just chopping off some letters. Okay. Blending is when we take two words and we merge them together. So this isn't compounding where we leave the words the same. This is when we take some sounds from the first word, some sounds from the second word, and we merge it together. For instance, in the word spork, that comes from spoon, the, S put, the SP in spork, and then the orc in fork makes the orc in spork. So you have sp, spoon, and orc from fork coming together to make the word spork. And it's essentially a eating tool that looks like a spoon but has little prongs at the end. Or everyone's favorite movie, we have Sharknado. So we have shark from shark, and we have nato from tornado to make the word sharknado. And as you would expect, this is a tornado that is made of sharks. Okay, we have back formation too. Now, back formation is different from clipping because in back formation, we're removing affixes. We're removing things that people think are affixes. So uh, one example would be the word absorption. Absorption has been reduced to the word absorb because we think that T-I-O-N is a suffix on the word absorption. Another clear example would be in the word babysitter. So babysitter is a noun. It has this E-R suffix on it. And this is very much similar to the agentive suffix. So you can have act and act or, so someone who acts. Now, when we see the word babysitter, we think, oh, that must be someone who babysits. But this word babysitter, the noun, came before the word babysit. So 
Babysit never existed, but we interpreted babysitter to mean one who babysits, and therefore we got that verb because we removed what we thought was an affix. Same thing with the word burglar. Burglar, we thought, oh, this is someone who burgles. But burgle was never a word. But now burgle has become a word because we've interpreted the R in burglar to mean that agentive suffix, that someone who burgles meaning. So that is back formation. We have acronyms and initialisms. So acronyms and initialisms are actually two separate things. Acronyms happen when you have a list of capital letters and you pronounce them as a word. So for instance, SWAT. This is the special weapons and tactics. That's what SWAT means. So we take the first letter of each word, S-W-A-T, we list them side by side, and we say it as a new word. So this is an acronym. And initialism is when we take the first letter of each word, so Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, but we do not pronounce it as a word. Instead, we just pronounce it as a sequence of letters. So this is called an initialism. Now, in something like missing an action, MIA, even though we could pronounce this as MIA, as a word, we, do, we normally say MIA. So this is another example of an initialism. So I'm sure there are some cases where you have initialisms that can be acronyms or acronyms that can be initialisms, depending on the person or the dialect or uh, just however you want to say the word. For instance, you could say MIA, you could say MIA. Depending on how you say it, it could change its form as an initialism or an acronym. So if you are taking this in a course, a lot of professors will just say that these are the same things to avoid that ambiguity. But there is a difference. Finally. The last method of word creation is called coinage. And this is just when you create a new word out of thin air. So a word like Q-tip. This was just picked as a company name or Band-Aid. You know those things, those little bandages that go over your knee when you have a wound that could look kind of like this and they feel like the devil when you peel them off because they're awful. I can draw a knee. That's my, <laughs> that's my awful knee. There's some little blood right there. Oh, it's spewing out. But you need that Band-Aid to put on. So that's just a company name. But now we use it for everything. Or word like dumpster, which are those big giant trash cans outside of stores. Uh, dumpster is a brand. Some people might call them just garbage bins generically. Uh, but dumpster, a proper noun, has now this generalized coinage use where we say dumpster for everything. That's a big trash can. So those are the different ways that we can create words. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them the best that I can.